Hi guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Marissa. What's up? What's going on? Today's video is all about pre-nursing or prerequisite classes for any science majors and how to get an A in anatomy and physiology. I make college lifestyle and nursing school videos. Make sure you don't miss another video by subscribing down below. I post videos twice a week. This video has been highly requested actually by you guys because I know I have a ton of pre-nursing and people taking prereqs right now. So I wanna be able to help you guys as much as possible for this upcoming semester. If you are new here, I am a recent grad from nursing school. I'm now a licensed practical nurse, just passed my NCLEX and currently applying to jobs. So in anatomy and physiology, you have your lecture and then you have your lab let's start with lecture first because then that's also going to impact how you do lab i'll give you a little background on my a and p journey second school they split it up as a and p1 and a and p2 instead of my first school was a like anatomy and then physiology so i did have to like technically retake like the first half just because the school did it differently so at my second school i did get an a in both which i am pretty proud of because i'm not an a student to be completely honest with you i'm like a b plus student I know what works and I know what doesn't work. Number one, go to class. What a thought. You're actually gonna need to attend these lectures because when I did it the first time, I didn't and thought that, oh, I'd be fine because the professor would give us the notes, the slideshows and stuff. Yeah, you are absolutely just not doing yourself a favor by not going to class. Everything that the professor says in class alongside the lecture is what's actually gonna be on the exam. And it's not only that, you're also showing to the professor that you care and want to be there. At my first school, it was a big lecture hall. So like, honestly, I don't know if she would have noticed if I was there as maybe 150, 200 people. The second one, when I took it at a smaller school, it was like 20 people and they took attendance. And like, if you were not there, she would literally email you and be like, why weren't you in your class today? Number two, Say you get those notes from your professor and you get the slideshows and like you get everything, still take notes. Don't just sit there and like, and expect to retain it. I would have my laptop in class and I would be having the slideshows up with the professor going through them and I would take little notes on the side or like sometimes I'd have like a Google doc and then like the slideshow and I would be like typing out whatever just sometimes I like wasn't fast enough so I was just typing everything out I would come back home and I would rewrite like handwrite the important stuff or basically I rewrite everything it's gonna be the second time you're seeing it so you might be like oh I actually don't know I didn't really get what she was saying with this but when I rewrite it again I'm like oh well, that makes so much sense because you're like also out of the classroom and it's just like you see it for a second time and it might click better also with the whole note taking thing prep before class because you don't want to show up to class like have your laptop open and then like have to go and download all the powerpoints and all the slideshows and then be like falling behind and missed four slides and you're like oh my god i can't catch up because i've done that it's not fun always before your class or like the night before download all the powerpoints you want to be scrambling in the first five to ten minutes of class when they're already lecturing and you're then missed all that information Always make friends with people around you and they're probably gonna be either same major or very similar majors. The majority of people in my A&P classes were either pre-nursing majors, pre-med majors, biology majors, or uh, any type of medical imaging. If you wanna study with someone, like get the person next to his number. It's not as weird as you think it is, okay? You're all gonna be studying for probably the same class in anatomy. You're probably also gonna be studying for chem with each other. Like make study groups and reach out to people and be like, hey, like you wanna study for this exam that's coming up or this practical or whatever. Ask your professor if you can audio record the lecture. A lot of them don't like video recording, which like honestly, that's a lot of storage anyways. You don't wanna video record. You wanna audio record. So go to your voice memos on, if you have like an iPhone and ask them, hey, can I leave my phone up either at the front of the class or on Honestly, if you have it at your desk, like it's pretty good. You just like tilt the microphone towards the class. That's also why you should be sitting up front so you get good audio quality because that's another resource. So figure out your learning style. I'm a mix of auditory and visual learning, more auditory. So the audio recordings are really helpful. On the way to and from class, I'd be listening to lectures whenever I'd go home for the weekends. Also, if you were typing something down and you know that you missed something, the audio recording is gonna get it. So you can always listen back and be like, okay, I think this was like 20 minutes in the class, go around it and then find it. And this is how I actually got like really good grades in nursing school. I would make up my study guide over the per like a week prior to my test. I would do an audio recording of me like reading through it and saying it as a sentence, not like, what is this? It would be like, this is, instead of being like, what is the powerhouse of the cell? The mitochondria. I would put it in, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. 
that's a sentence and it's a phrase that I can remember. So I did that with majority of like anatomy and physiology. It's actually pretty easy to do just because it's pretty like, there's no real guess. It's pretty objective. So you just like say things that is, as a sentence or you make a reference to another thing. And it's like you're teaching it to yourself, but then you listen back to it and you're like, oh, I remember me saying that in the car right here when you're on the test. I also highly suggest flashcards, quizlets, diagrams, everything like that. Anatomy is very visually oriented when you're like actually looking at the anatomy of something. Take pictures of all the models, which are kind of, this is kind of going into more lab, but take pictures of all the models, label everything, print, make your own quizlets of it, make your own flashcards. I had this whiteboard in my room. It was like a big, like it was a big whiteboard and I would write heart diagrams on it, brain diagrams. This is so funny. In freshman year, printed out a skeleton and put it on my wall and I labeled it. So every time it was right by my door, every time I opened my door and walked out, I had to look at it. We named it Frank. It was a thing. Now going on to lab, your lab instructor. Sometimes your lab instructor is not the same as your lecture instructor, which is kind of a good and a bad thing. It's a good thing because if you don't get along well with your Lecture instructor, you could get along well with your lab instructor, but it is not good because sometimes they don't communicate and lab and lecture are not really lined up. Also, lab is like three to four hours and it is um, tedious, it's a time. Out of all the labs that I've had, like out of chemistry, biology, all that stuff, anatomy was probably one of my favorites because we did like dissections and we did a lot of like diagram work, which I did really like. In lab, you have to be careful with having your phone out just because there are a lot of chemicals and there are a lot of just like rules in lab, but Make sure to ask your lab instructor when models are out, when you're not like dissecting, but when your models are out, see if you can take pictures. There's usually like laminated things like labels. You take a picture of the label thing, you take a picture of the diagram because that's what's gonna be on your practical. You're going to use that exact same model on your practical. Practical is an exam on your lab information, whether that's a diagram, a dissection, kind of like where everything is in the body. That is what a practical is. It can be anywhere from 50 to 150 questions. They're gonna use that one that they have and the one that, that you've been taught to know. They're not gonna just pull a random one out of the closet and be like, oh, we wanna use this one instead. Be careful with that stuff. Ask your professor, hey, can I be the one taking pictures and videos of like explaining things? The best thing I think I ever did was take a full video of my professor. I asked her beforehand and I was like, can you do a run through of the entire, I think it was a cat or a rabbit. I can't really remember. The entire run through of this, of all, it, we were doing arteries and veins and they're like colored, different colors and stuff. Can you do this in the dissection? Can you run through the entire thing? And can I record you? I won't do your face, like literally just point to it with the like little metal thing. And she was like, of course, sure. I watched that video, no joke, 15 to 20 times. And I was just like, okay, this is gonna look like this in the practical. And if I didn't have that video, I probably would have failed that practical because things are so like small in the body too, where if you have a pin in one thing, you're like, okay, what is it actually in? Because there's three things surrounding it. If you show initiative that you actually care and like really wanna do well, they're gonna be like, okay, yeah, I'll help you. Or you can sign in during the like office hours of the lab. They're usually in your syllabus of like, hey, these hours of the week, like nobody's in here using it for lab. Like there's gonna be a monitor there. You just have to come in, sign in, utilize everything, maybe put it away and then leave. You can't leave the building with any of the supplies. I mean, granted every school is different, but like you usually can't. But never, 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 never skip a lab, ever. It's a pain to reschedule and go to another lab like session because most of them are probably gonna be capped because you can only have so many people in lab at once. It's just like a regulatory thing. Professors have really strict guidelines. Like if you miss two or more labs, like you just fail the class. So read your syllabus, do everything like that. Like a and is actually one of my favorite classes. Like don't get me wrong, I love a and It can be difficult at times, but if you actually work towards it, it's like not that bad, especially if you're really interested in like, say you're going into nursing or going into medical imaging or pre-med, you are going to really like it. It's interesting and you learn a lot. You're also retain this information. Don't just like retain it and then like throw it out the next semester because everything's gonna build on top of it. 
So that is all the advice that I have for today. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way, shape or form. Make sure to leave a comment down below. I respond to every single comment and I also respond to all my DMs. So if you have any particular questions for me, how I did my nursing program or anything like that, check out the nursing school playlist down below. DM me on Instagram if you want to. You can also follow me on Instagram if you wanted to. And make sure to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in my next video.